I'm a durian lover right now, and the whole my family are durian lover, and we've done like a durian party on my balcony. Meet Madina. She moved to Malaysia from Kazakhstan in 2009 and now runs several businesses around the world. She shared her top secrets on how to gain the trust of Malaysians, how to become a durian lover as a foreigner, and why she still doesn't hold Malaysian PR. I'm Max, entrepreneur and YouTuber from Singapore. Let's dive in. What's the three best things for you about Malaysia? Food. <laughs> I stay here 13 years. The first eight years I ate only my food and Chinese food because the Chinese food is similar compared mm. to Soviet Union food. After eight years, I recognized that I want to try something else. Then I fall in love to Indian food. It's amazing because it's a mixture of the spices. In the end, I start to love the Malay food. The Malay food also, when you understand the taste, later on you want to eat it again and again. After 10 years, I understand the durian. So it's amazing. <laughs> it took you 10 years. Uh, yes, yes, it takes me from 10 years and uh, I'm a durian lover right now and the whole my family are durian lover and we've done like a durian party on my balcony. My kids, when you don't tell to the kids that the smell is awful, they're taking and they like it straight away. I can say that we are durian family, uh, <laughs> durian lover family. In Dubai, we found as well on the market and the price was like $60 for oh. one durian <laughs> USD. Yeah. And then my kids asked me, mommy, mommy, can we buy? <laughs> I said, no, no, okay. no, we'll go to Malaysia and eat there. <laughs> yeah. So first one is food. The second one is nature. It's beautiful because it's just the 40 minutes away, you can go to Genting, or you can go uh, the three hours away, there is the Cameron Highlands. So you can find the biggest flower in the world, which is called Traflasia. It's just a one or one and a half hour in the jungle, and then you can find this uh, flower. There is a beautiful cave, there is a historical buildings, different types of monkeys. I used to stay in Bukit Jalil area and my apartment, I have the huge terrace, the big terrace. And to be honest, I had uh, lots of different orchids there. Mm. And you don't need to take care a lot because it's the nature and uh, they are growing by themselves. Even though I come back after one year to my apartment and I see it, it's like a small jungle mm. area because the different types of trees and the flowers, I don't know from where they are <laughs> on my balcony. Also, I've seen the monkey, I've seen the lizard, the chameleon was like our friend and we called him George. <laughs> <laughs> so the nature is amazing here. And the last one, it's about islands. <laughs> it's amazing islands, especially on the East Coast, which is called Tridang Island, Operhentian Island, with the beautiful water, with the nice and big turtles, with the beautiful sand. Definitely during, uh, I don't know how many times a year, four or five years, normally we had a holiday to the different islands uh, in Malaysia. Right. Because it just take one hour. Do you remember your first impressions of the country? I was here with my friends. It was like a two days, we stay in Traders Hotel. During the city tour, it was like a heavy rain and we haven't seen at all the city. Then one of friend of ours, she tell us like uh, awful stories about the city that uh, the women cannot stay with the guys. I mean, the single women cannot uh, yeah. be in the same apartment with the guys, and then they have a punishment on the square. The stories like was horrible. That's why when I left Kuala Lumpur, I said, oh, it's a beautiful city, the nice uh, Petronas Towers, but I don't want to come back next mm. time <laughs> mm. to the city. Then I met with my husband. I stayed in Malaysia 13 years. Kazakhstan is, is a Muslim country and Malaysia is predominantly Muslim as well. The majority is Muslim. What I can say that it's about the similar. So in Kazakhstan there is a different nationalities. Yes, definitely there, it's a Muslim country, but it's like a democratic. If you are not Muslim, it's fine. So mm. They do not push you to pray five times a, a day or to follow the rules. In Malaysia, uh, what I like here, that the people, they are also not so strict with the uh, religion. So they are strict, uh, for example, Malay people, they are strict to Malays, but they do not strict to Chinese or Indian because they have their own culture. They have own, their own religion. 
like a Chinese, most of them, uh, they're Catholics. Indians, they, some of them like a Hindu, some of them, they, they, they have a different religion. And also there is lots of tourists. In this case, uh, they are more strict during Ramadan period. So they're more strict to Malays. So they can't eat uh, outside, uh, I mean, on the streets, in the shopping centers, but uh, they do not push the foreigners not to eat. Yeah. or the other nationalities and also you can wear whatever you want they don't tell you oh why you are wearing you know such an open blouse or shorts or whatever so they, they find and it's nice not like in um, Saudi Arabia or Iran I heard that it's quite difficult to get a PR status for the foreigner in in Malaysia I think it's even more difficult than in Singapore it's true so uh, in Malaysia, my husband, he used to stay 25 years. In the end, they asked him, you should apply for PR. But to apply for the PR, it's, you have to spend a lot of time. You have to bring so many documents and then you can you should uh, bring from one immigration department to another department. And then normally it takes like, uh, I don't know, years to get this PR. The foreign girls who is married yeah. to, to locals, so even though they cannot get the PR easily, they have to apply and bring lots of documents and wait. And there is a, some kind of procedure, the difficult procedure. I know the girls who is living here like 15 years with the local husbands and they still don't have the PR. For a few years, you, you were doing business in Singapore and st it's still like part of your business is in Singapore. What's the biggest dif difference for you, like Singapore and, and Malaysia? The first, definitely, it's a currency. <laughs> it's three times more expensive in Singapore yeah. compared to Malaysia. For example, in Kuala Lumpur, you can buy an apartment in the, here nearby the KLCC. The, the prices starts from like 2 million uh, ringgit, which is mm -hmm. 500,000 USD. And approximately. Mm -hmm. In Singapore, if you want to buy the apartment uh, nearby the Singapore River, I mean in the city as well, in the center, the prices become like a 2.5 million sin dollars, which is 2 million. So it's a three, four times more expensive. To buy the cheapest apartment, which is not inside, so it's uh, on the neighborhood, so the price like a 500 thousand sin dollars. Other expenses as well. So if you have the family, so it means your expenses increasing for the kids' education, for the kids' activities. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the whole living expenses. So to stay in Malaysia, I mean, to have the good car, to have the good apartment and uh, send your kids to international school, I mean, with a good living in Kuala Lumpur, you need approximately, for example, seven to eight K. If you have a 10 K, so it's a really good living in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, USD or USD? SGD? Yes, USD. I'm talking about the USD. For how many people in the family? For, for example, two plus two. Yeah, two adults and two kids. Yeah. This 5,000, it's enough. But if it's a 10K uh, USD, so it means you can feel that you're like a rich person. Yeah. <laughs> in Singapore, to have the same feeling, <laughs> you should have like a stats from 30,000 USD and yeah. more. And even though you don't feel that you are a rich person, yeah. because to buy the cars in Singapore, <laughs> it's another challenging. <laughs> you are living in Singapore and you know it, yes? <laughs> that the price starts from 120,000 sin dollars, just yeah. for normal Toyota. In Kuala Lumpur, you can buy for this money the nice BMW. Can you compare like the way of doing business? in Malaysia and in Singapore in terms of like let's say business communication it's more difficult to communicate in Singapore uh, <laughs> they're like a sharks oh, yeah? <laughs> the managers <laughs> they have a beautiful English they are money-minded people definitely because the normally I communicate with the hoteliers with mm -hmm. the director of sales of the for example Ritz Carlton Hotel or Mandarin Oriental Hotel. My purpose was to get the better rates <laughs> for the company. Like a one or two hours when you talk with the person, you feel that you are talking with a shark because they are so professional in this field. In Malaysia, the people more softer. Uh. Yesterday, I have spoken with one of our partners and she told me that, you know how to get my positive reply? I like to eat, so you can feed me well. 
Yesterday I bring to my partner the honey cake, the Russian uh, cake, and they were so excited about this taste. So I said, okay, next time I'll bring you some more cakes <laughs> to get to get the positive yeah. reply to my questions. What's other like best ways to gain trust with Malaysia? They're family-oriented people. They love kids. Even the men, the guys, they really love kids. And it's a big difference between the CIS countries, for example, and the people from Malaysia. So if, let's say, you are going to the shopping mall or you are going to the plane or whatever, the people, they're really supportive. They are friendly to the kids. So if, let's say, you want to start to communicate nicely with the, per with the people, First, definitely, you can start with the questions about the family, mm. you have kids or you don't, uh, you have husband, all uh, questions like this. After that, they, you can feel that uh, the people, they start to be more closer to you. Like yesterday, for example, I was in KLCC, I decided to grab some food faster. Then it was all the tables were so busy, so it was no even single place to sit down. And it was the Malay couple, the boy and girl. So I asked them, can I share with you, please, <laughs> the table? <laughs> and they said, yes, yes, please enjoy. So I sit down, so then they asked me, do you want the fruits? Well, we have the, the local fruits, uh, please try, it's really delicious. They start to explain to me what kind of fruits is this. Then we start to talk who you are, uh, from which uh, area in Kuala Lumpur, what do you do, you know? So we become almost friends yesterday for during the 10 minutes. Mm. <laughs> they are so open, the people yeah. are really open. What's the like big no-no in Malaysia? What you wouldn't want to discuss with people or that you don't want to do, like being in Malaysia as a foreigner, let's say? Immigration. <laughs> 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 yes, so better to come um, following all the rules because yeah. the immigration is really strict here. Also, if let's say you delay with your visa uh, for one or two days. If you like overstay your visa. Overstay, yeah? yes. Mm. So same thing. So they're really strict to the uh, to your stay in the country. Also, definitely you have to follow the culture and you have to follow the rules of the, the country. So I think this is only things in Malaysia because in other areas it's quite open, friendly, and normally you don't have any difficulties. Even though on the road, for example, if you are driving the car, I never mm. paid fine. <laughs> to be honest, for these 13 years. <laughs> why? Because you always can negotiate and explain to the policeman mm. why you overspeed, oh, why you're talking via phone. <laughs> so, and it's really nice that you can communicate with the people and yeah. they understand why. The most um, tough uh, part for me is immigration. Do you think you changed as a person after these 13 years in Malaysia? Sure, definitely. I'm more patient. <laughs> I'm more calm. I'm not so stressful. <laughs> and I understand that I start to smile more compared to our countries. Because I can see all the people are smiling here. Maybe because of the weather. When there is not minus 30, <laughs> definitely you feel better. <laughs> If you like this video, check out the next one. But you have only five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one.